So we have to observe. So that word is shamar. And it means to guard, to observe, to keep watch, to protect, to hedge around about. We have to, you know, guard our walk with God with a bloody sword. We have to guard our walk. We can't let anyone influence us or intimidate us because that's how the enemy gets us. That spirit of fear tried to take out Elisha after he just did this amazing, had this amazing victory. Look at how fast that thing came after him. But see, greater is he that's in us than he that's in the world. So don't be afraid. We get the point. Don't be terrified or oppressed or harassed. Don't be dismayed to be shattered, to be confused or beaten down. If you're beaten down and confused, that's not of God. That's the enemy coming and afflicting you, right? So then to meditate means to meditate, to speak, but it means to imagine. See, there are vain imaginations, but we have godly imaginations. And the Holy Spirit is the one who speaks in through to us. Who, who, you know, he wants you to see yourself as that champion. He wants you to see yourself as that, that overcomer, that successful person, that, that one that has all their bills paid, that wealthy person, the one that sees family restoration. You have to see it. Isn't it easy? If I say apple, can you see the apple? right? If I say, oh my God, there was a car accident. Can you see the car accident? Right? And you can also picture maybe someone getting killed or some type of devastation. Well, our minds are incredibly powerful. He's saying, listen, I want you not only to meditate on the word, I want you to imagine it. I want you to see me interacting. I want you to see yourself laying hands on people, casting out devils. I want you to see yourself speaking life, prophesying. I want you to see yourself decreeing healing. I want you to see yourself decreeing shift over your region. See, we have to do this. We ha what are you thinking? What are you meditating on? 2 Corinthians 10, in the Passion, it says, For although we live in a natural realm, we don't wage a military campaign employing human weapons, using manipula manipulation to achieve our aims. Indeed, our spiritual weapons are energized with divine power to effectively dismantle the defenses behind which people hide. We demolish every deceptive fantasy that opposes God. And we break through every arrogant attitude that is raised up in defense or defiance of the true knowledge of God. We capture like prisoners of war every thought and insist that one that it bow in obedience to the anointed one. Isn't that good? So this is what we have to do. And so, you know, part of, what, you know, when I was uh, really struggling with the panic attacks, I had to really, I mean, I took, I would take authority over it. I would lay hand. At the time, I didn't have anybody speaking deliverance over me. And, and so God meets us where we're at. And I'm grateful as I move forward, I was able to get prayer. But I'm, see, a lot of times, and, and, and hear what I'm saying, a lot of times we put an emphasis that someone else has to do it for us. We have to do it. Now, we need each other, don't get me wrong, but I'm the prophet of my own life. And so I have to prophesy victory. I have to prophesy deliverance. I have to prophesy breakthrough. I don't, I mean, I, I love it when others do it, but I'm prophesying for who I am in Christ. The enemy is not going to speak over who I am in Christ, right? We have to get that, that, that lion-like attitude where we're not going to back down with this. And so God does not want us to allow the enemy dictate our destiny because when we're in fear or really battling any other kind of issues, demonic issues, the enemy says, listen, I have an assignment and I have an appointment for you and I'm going to dictate and I'm going to whisper lies that are familiar to you how and why and how and when and how you're going to move forward if you move forward. But you know what? There's a Psalm, I mean, I'm sorry, in Isaiah 52 it's talking about the, 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 um, uh, the he's, he's talking about the captive woman of Zion getting free. And it, and it said, uh, Zion is a free church. So why would he say a captive woman of Zion? And I always pictured it to have like a chain around your neck. And you know what? The, he'll give you a little rope. He'll give you like three things that he'll let you do. And then the moment you're starting to walk that forward, he pulls you back. Right? You're getting a little head, you know, head start, and he pulls you back. And the Lord's saying, enough of that. We're ending that today. No more of the enemy yanking us by the chain and pulling us back. I saw a picture of um, this it, it was Islam. It was an Islam, a Muslim guy, and he, he had a chain, and he had three women behind him pulling them. 
I thought, this guy is out of his mind. But you know what? If you, that's no different than what the devil does to us when he's lying to us. It's no different. He's walking ahead of us. We're listening to him, and he has a chain. He's yanking us, and he's letting us know how far we're going to go. But see, that ends today because the Spirit of the Lord is here to set the captives free, and it's a choice. We have to be determined, I'm telling you. If you knew how bad I was with these panic attacks, you know, and it was, it was just pressing into the Lord. When, when I got saved, we were taught to get on our faces before the Lord and to pray and to wait on God. And God wants to bring us back to that. I'm not saying that you're not doing it, but, but a lot of times we don't. You know, I have a church, remember that. I minister a lot to people. So the Bible says in Jude 3, I don't have it on the um, computer. It says, Beloved, while I was making every effort to write you about common salvation, I was compelled to write you urgently, appealing that you fight strenuously for the defense of the faith, which was once for all handed down to the saints, the faith that is the sum of Christian belief that was given verbally to believers. We have to fight for our faith. It doesn't just happen. We have to fight. The Lord said to me, Tricia, I am a, the avenger. I am coming to avenge my people. He said, I am coming to avenge my people. And I was in Luke, you know, it's in Luke chapter 18 where that widow, she kept, you know, going to the judge and she kept knocking on that door and knocking on that door and the unjust judge, he's like, oh my gosh, this woman's making me black and blue. I can't take her. And he said, well, how much more me being your God? He, and in that whole portion, if you read it, especially in the Amplified, he says, I'm going to avenge you. I'm going to avenge the loss. I'm going to avenge that which has been stolen from you. He's going to avenge the regrets many of you have been walking in. The Lord says that, that he's going to avenge and turn the situation around. He says, but will I find faith? See, so in that period of time, that lady didn't give up. She's like, I'm getting what's mine. And you're not taking it from me. See, we have to get that attitude. It's not, what's the point? I've been waiting so long. Uh-uh. I'm taking what's mine. Because that's who we are. That's what the Lord says. When you've done all to stand, you stand. And you stand, and you stand, and you stand. Amen? Okay, we're good? All right. So fear can enter, and I think we know this, but in case you don't know it, through many different avenues. And these are just some. Fear can enter through sin, childhood trauma, generational curses, word curses, rebellion, intrusion, the enemy, he invades our thoughts, unforgiveness, stubbornness, negative thoughts, horror movies, um, you know, many different ways. And so right now you have to check and see, are, what are you watching? I was on a plane coming here this morning, and this guy sitting next, uh, right across from me to the right was watching the most vile movie that I really did want to smack him. He, I thought, why in the world would they allow an evil movie like that on the plane, right? And I thought, I don't want my eye gate to see that movie. But anyway, so we have to watch what we're watching. And, and, and I did think about ministering to him, don't get me wrong. I mean, I did want to walk in love towards the guy, but he got off the plane first. But what are you watching? What are you, what, what are you allowing yourself to be... Um, you know, your friends, what are you, what, what are you, who are you hanging out with? What are you doing? These are all things that we have to check and identify because it brings you down. It brings you down. And so, again, the Lord says we have to consecrate ourselves in this season because no flesh will glory in his presence. The glory of the Lord is coming in a way that this is what he said to me, that we've not experienced. And remember Ananias and Sapphira, they didn't make it. So what... You know, he's a God of love, but he's also a God of justice and judgment. But, I, I, you know, again, this is what he keeps speaking to me. Get your life right. Get consecrated. Surrender to me. Be, con you know, surrendered and consecrated. Allow me to uh, uproot root systems. You know, we all have blind spots. You might want to ask somebody for a little ministry time to let them speak into your life. Because, you know, it's like having bad breath. You're the last one that knows. Everybody else knows. So you might as well just ask them. If, uh, you know, if there's something in me that especially, well, maybe not your mate, he might be too truthful, but, but no, ask him, what, what is it that you see in me? Is there something there that you recognize that you can help me move forward? That's okay. Conflict resolution, feedback, it's good stuff. It's not there to hurt you. It's there to help you. 
So in 1 John 4, and he amplified, it says, There is no fear in love. Dread does not exist. But perfect, complete, full-grown love, full love drives out fear because fear involves expectation of divine punishment. So the one who is afraid of God's judgment is not perfected in love, has not grown in a sufficient understanding of God's love. That was the, this was the key thing that helped me get free, was, was learning the love of God. We hear it all the time. But we need to immerse ourselves in, in, in just allowing the Father to love us. I had absolutely no idea, uh, you know, years ago about the love of God. And where we used to attend church, there was this, uh, that we had um, a Romany um, section, a group of people that would come in. And this one guy, Frank, would always cry out, Daddy, Daddy, I love you. And I thought, oh, my Lord, if this guy doesn't shut up. And I wanted the ushers to get him and get him out of that church, you know. And I'm like, oh, my God. And the Lord said, you have the problem. It's not him. He has the relationship with me. And I thought, oh. And I thought, really? I, I had never heard of that. I never heard of the Father's love. I was okay with Jesus. I had a little issue with the Father. And I know a lot of us do. And so, but that was the thing that, you know, my dad was a great dad. He died very young, but he worked a lot of jobs, so I never saw him. So I interpreted it as someone who was disinterested. And so that's how when I would go before the Lord, I just felt like I was insignificant and he wasn't interested. So you see why that had to shift. And so it says perfect love. Well, I know it this way. Perfect love casts out all fear. But there's no fear in love. Dread does not exist. God's got our back. And we have to understand he loves us. What does Psalm say? Or uh, uh, Jeremiah or Lamentations. He loves us with an everlasting love. You know, we're created in his image. You know, and, and so he has, he, there's just so much that he does for us. And uh, so we have to really grab hold of that. If you are battling right now where you're, you're struggling with a lot of fear and you don't know the love of the Father, just right now, just ask him, Lord, I surrender myself to you. And, and, and help me in this place. Reveal your love to me. I mean, he's been doing it. It's just that you have to be able to receive that love. And that was the hardest thing for me, to receive it. 